Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I'm making a soap using a fragrance that I love. It is called Strawberry Rhubarb Pie from Nature's Garden. Ooh, <laughs> yum, this smells good. And I love rhubarb. It's a very nostalgic plant for me. I grew up in Wisconsin and the rhubarb plants had the huge stalks and the leaves and we would carry them around like they were umbrellas. I love them and we dip the stalks in sugar and munch on them on a hot summer day and it's just a very nostalgic scent and this fragrance smells fantastic. So for the colors, um, I don't know if I'm really going to replicate what a rhubarb looks like. It kind of has like a dark green reddish stripe in the stalk and then of course the big leaves are green. But I was thinking of pie, you know, strawberry rhubarb pie. So one of the colors that I want to use is My Red Obsession from Nurture Soap, and it has sort of a pink overtone, so that'll be part of the color swirl. And the other one, just because it's fun and I think it's a really cute, is this lime green mojito. <laughs> Check that out. That just looks really happy to me. So I'm thinking of summer fruit pies, and um, I'm just going to make this swirly and fun, and I think on the top I'll just do a scoopy top and just let the fragrance speak for itself. This is going to be a goat milk soap. And I'll be doing the milk and oil method today for my uh, goat milk portion. It makes the prep work a little bit easy for me, so I really like the milk and oil method. So I'm going to get everything pulled together, and let's make some strawberry rhubarb pie soap. Yum! I might have to go cook something after this. All right, I've got all of my oils and butters in this container, and I'm making a big, bigger batch today, so I'm probably going to need to um, switch to a bigger container. But while I still have this in here, I'm going to add all my additives to my oils, which includes my Farm Fresh goat milk that I have water discounted from the lye solution. So that'll go in here. So good. And also, I decided, <laughs> since this is just foodie and wonderful and luscious and summery, I'm going to add some coconut milk powder in here also, just for fun, because I have it and why not, right? So, two tablespoons of coconut milk powder, two tablespoons of colloidal oats, and two tablespoons of kale and clay. That's what's going on in here. I'm going to get this all blend it up, let this absorb, and switch to a bigger container, and we'll come back when I'm ready to move on. All right, I'm ready to move forward here, and I've made a couple of decisions. I'm going to keep it in here. It's going to get really full when I add my lye solution, but I'm okay with that. Uh, if everything's behaving after I add the fragrance, I have my little frosting comb that I would like to run through and maybe do a layer on the bottom just to add some fun, you know, why not? Uh, and so I have my colors going and I decided to add another color also. I'm going to add this pretty purple from Be Scented. Um, it's just so cute and I can't resist. So that is going to uh, be one of the colors in here also. So, and this is going to depend on how the fragrance is behaving. I've not used this fragrance before, and if everything's behaving really well, I'll have more time to play around and have some fun with it. If not, we'll just get moving straight on and, you know, not mess around. So, it's one of those things. I like to keep my options open. So, here is my lye solution. This is going to get really full. It's water discounted for the goat milk. I have cane sugar, Tussa silk fibers, and sodium lactate is what's going on in there. And we'll just get this up to emulsion. Just pulse and stir until it's all blended really well. And then we'll split off for the colors and uh, we can stick blend more as needed after we get the fragrance and the colors and all that. So again, a little bit of a color morph here, and that is just the lye reacting, caramelizing the milk sugars in there, the coconut milk powder, and the goat milk and all that, but it'll bounce back. And the fragrance, uh, the strawberry rhubarb pie, the reviews and stuff said that it did not cause discoloration. So um, I'm not going to add any titanium dioxide, we're just going to let it kind of do what it does in the uncolored portions. So we're coming along here. I think I've got emulsion. All right. So 
And this is my bucket of just really warm water with just a teeny bit of dish soap in there. And that's where I rest my spatulas and my stick blender when it's off to the side. So that's all that is. It just keeps things nice and it doesn't get crusty or built up on there. So that's what that is. Let me split off. Isn't that gorgeous? That crimson red wine. And I have my colors dispersed in just a little bit of water just to make the blending smooth. So I want the most of that because to me this color reminds me the most of a rhubarb red. Here's that fun green. Isn't that pretty? Now the greens can morph if this gets like a weird sort of you know, khaki green, don't let that throw you off. It'll bounce back. Greens and yellows can go wonky when the lie hits it, but they come back. Here is that pretty purple, and it is indeed pretty, I think. So cute. All right. Now, I'm going to add the fragrance, and then we'll get to blending and pouring.
All right, it's the next morning and I'm not ready to cut this soap yet. It's not quite ready. I can actually still feel a little heat radiating off it, but I can tell that the top has dulled out a little. There's no soda ash, but look at those colors. I want those to be really vibrant and bright and glossy. So I'm gonna come in with my steamer here and I'm just waiting for it to get up to temperature. Wait, there we go, I gotta turn it on. So it'll get to steaming this clothes steamer and it'll just gloss up the top. Now it's gonna be wet when I steam it, so I'm gonna get it steamed up and walk away for a few hours and then come back for the cutting. And it'll be dry to the touch, but it will keep this glossy shine to it, which I just think is so pretty. So if you do have soda ash on your soaps, this can really uh, help knock that down too. I don't do this to all my soaps, but you know, it just adds a little something, I think. There we go. So this is wet, but you can see how it just makes it vibrant. We'll come back in a couple hours and I'll show you. It'll stay shiny, but it'll be dry to the touch. All right, it's been a good couple of hours since I steamed the top, so it's dry to the touch, but it kept a nice glossy look to it. So, and that's why I steam. I just think it looks beautiful. So I cannot wait to get these out. These smell fantastic today. This berry rhubarb and uh, the goat milk, the coconut milk, the swirls. I can't wait to get in here and see what it looks like. It got a little bit thick um, because I had to wait after I poured that bottom layer and did a little glitter mica line. Um, I had to wait so long for it to firm up to pour, so it got a little thick. I'm hoping I don't have air pockets in here. It was manageable, so but that wasn't the fragrance misbehaving. The fragrance behaved beautifully, so that was just me having to wait. All right, let's get into these. Oh, it smells really good in the studio, by the way. <laughs> this fragrance is nice. In the pot swirl here. Oh, no air pockets. I'm so thankful. Little, you can see a little bit of the mica line down there. So I bet as we get farther into this, we're gonna see a little bit more uh, swirliness. So let's keep cutting. Oh, these are pretty. They smell fantastic. So um, I really love milk soaps and that last minute addition of coconut milk soap or coconut milk powder with the goat milk, I think is gonna make a really creamy lather on these. So I love it. Plus it's kind of foody, you know, and these being a really berry, berry-licious smelling. <laughs> That rhubarb and strawberry, it, it smells fantastic. So I would say if you like fruity stuff, definitely give that fragrance a try from Nature's Garden. <laughs> 